Hi there, I wanted to make this video for uh, some time, uh, but I didn't have the time. It's uh, going to get uh, cold this winter, and a lot of people won't uh, be able to heat their homes. And I thought this would be interesting for them to think about. What you see here is a vertical wind turbine. Uh, it, has, uh, it basically stands on axis, has some vertical uh, airfoil wings that uh, are not drag based so they're not dragged along by the wind but they kind of uh, are functioning as a sail and they can rotate around the central axis and if you do that then it looks a little bit like this these type of wind turbines are, are relatively easy to make uh, but they're not very popular because they're relatively easy to make and they actually uh, they are said to be less efficient and that may be the case but they're also uh, cheap you can see that you need a, a central uh, pillar something like that, uh, some, some place to rotate around uh, some uh, cross beams and, uh, and the material for the wings it can all be aluminum or steel or whatever or wood and usually these types of devices have uh, right here in the middle they have uh, a, little, uh, a little electrical generator and then they generate electricity and the electricity is used elsewhere that's basically the, the way these type of wind turbines are used but if you have a specific uh, use in mind, that, use, that is not necessary to make electricity of it. You know, Dutch windmills uh, since the, the 1500s or the 1400s were do, used for all kinds of things to do, to, for milling, for sawing, for, uh, for pumping. Uh, all these functions were special purpose and these mills were built special purpose. You can do that with these type of things as well. So uh, if you want to use this... This, this, the energy captured by a device like this, and if it's like 6 meters by 12 meters, then it's quite a lot of kilowatts. Um, enough energy to heat a lot of homes. Uh, you can simply make sure that you have a, a kind of an axle that goes down uh, to, uh, to a reservoir underground. This is, this is all air now, but it's supposed to be ground of course, and deep underground you have a place that you consider the reservoir of the heat. And the only thing you need to do really is to make sure that all the energy that is uh, pumped into this, this, this part of the windmill uh, is turned into uh, torque of the axis. So basically the wind turns the axis around, axle around, is dissipated down here. So uh, that's very easy because heat uh, or basically uh, energy also all, always wants to dissipate into a low, uh, low energy heat, uh, low grade heat. So you just uh, create some resistance here or some other types. You see, uh, let's say the high, most high-end solution is to use magnets uh, to create eddy currents in some kind of metal that gets very hot. You can see that uh, every now and then in these uh, training uh, devices, exercise uh, machines. And uh, what basically happens, and that's a funny thing about it, is that uh, the energy of the wind is transported through the axis without uh, virtually without any loss of course there's some friction but that's uh, that's good if you especially if you let the whole thing rest on the bottom uh, and you get all the friction down here inside this uh, chamber where you collect the heat and uh, because of uh, the thickness of the earth that you use but you don't have to go very deep uh, it's well very well insulated so the heat is generated somewhere where it basically cannot escape where it takes a long time for it to uh, to move away. Of course, if you have groundwater, then you have a, a problem. But what you can do is, you simply take these uh, one of these uh, these water tanks for agriculture. You dig them into the ground, and you might fill them up with sand or something like uh, that to to store more heat, or uh, or some kind of with uh, uh, phase change material or something like that. But this is what you do. You basically generate the heat down here underground. Uh, it is here, uh, and then you transport it to uh, to some houses that you have uh, nearby, or you let's say you make the distance as short as possible, of course, to reduce the losses. But uh, it's simply uh, you take a pipeline, you circulate uh, oil or water through this uh, this heated uh, 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 well storage, and you circulate that heat into the homes. Now this thing can be catching wind all day in the winter when you are in your job and then you go home and you have uh, all this heat stored here oh, you can see it but all the heat stored down here it's taken to your place to your home 
You can heat your home with it, you can heat your water with it. I'm not sure how hot it can get. I, I would imagine that it can get pretty pretty hot. And um, that's basically the idea. And you know, if you are, uh, there's many areas in the world where you have a lot of wind uh, and where it's very cold in the winter. And you can build very well isolated homes, but uh, I know from communicating with people in Alaska, for instance, that of course they need a lot of fuel to heat their places. Uh, and of course, you know, if you have a fire burning, that's nice to look at. But, uh, but heating your home is not a very high-end thing to do. And, uh, and you can do it this way. Uh, there's plenty of uh, places near the coast, especially, where the wind is severe. And as a result of that wind, it is very cold. Uh, now, well, it's very nice that you can also, with the use of that wind, uh, heat the home again. Uh, most efficient, actually, would be, or one of the efficient solutions would be to have one of these on, uh, very close to the home, attached to the home. Uh, because uh, a small one will catch about 2 kilowatt, uh, which is enough to heat uh, a well-insulated home. It's, uh, it's the, it's one kilowatt is the heat that's given off by an electrical uh, uh, heater. So uh, that would be an option. And uh, material-wise, and let's say structural complexity-wise, you know, how, how, how difficult is it to make this? Of course it's very simple, you can see that immediately. You basically uh, need no... Uh, controlling electronics or, or things like that even. You can make this out of wood, out of, out of bamboo, out of steel, out of aluminum, out of plastic, uh, glass fiber, polyester, whatever you want, uh, as long as you transport the torque and you generate the heat down here somewhere. And uh, this is also good news for uh, people that like uh, fossil fuels because of course you know, heating uses up a lot of gas and, uh, and, and a lot of oil you might want to use that in a, in a different way. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, if you have this type of solutions as a possibility where you heat your home virtually without cost, uh, and, and of course you know, these things can last a long, long time if you uh, build them well, uh, then, uh, then it's kind of uh, climate antisocial to, uh, to, uh, to not do it. And uh, that's why I'm talking about it. If you like this idea, I build a website around it. Or not, it's not a very complex, just a web page basically and a URL. I'll put it underneath this video and uh, you can send any messages to the email address that is also put on that uh, website or underneath this video. And, uh, and uh, I'm myself per personally I'm going to try to build one of these on a small scale. Uh, but of course, you know, you need money to do that. I guess there's plenty of places that can easily that calculate that something like this, even a large si size only costs about 3000 uh, euros and, uh, and uh, if you have not too much groundwater you can store a lot of heat in it and you can actually uh, if you want to make uh, conduits to, to remove the heat from the ground you can put them quite close to this where you drill the axle uh, so uh, you know there the, this, this is just the concept basically and then you can uh, with some engineers you can work out what would be the smartest way it is uh, smarter than generating electricity here and transporting it to your house and then turning into heat because you have all kinds of losses. You at least have a 10% uh, loss in the generating and then you have 10% uh, loss in, 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 the, in the transportation. And of course it's much more expensive to have copper wires to transport uh, electricity to have a generator here that's, that adds thousands of euros to this machine where if it's used mechanically it will only cost uh, one and a half thousand for quite a large one already euros. So uh, this is all done uh, because I study technology, renewable technology a lot, and there's lots of these type of ideas that can really bring uh, solutions. Uh, because the winter is going to be uh, pretty cold in some areas, I think it's good to uh, think about this. Of course, if you have let's say severe storms and tornadoes. That's not a problem because you can always, you know, when you hear that someone, uh, one of these is coming, you can basically remove these off the windmill very easily, and uh, you can even design them in such a way that they simply break off in a way that you can repair it very easily. That's also, uh, you know, if you have, uh, if you cannot build something for strength, you can build it to uh, to be uh, weak but repairable. That's also an option. Anyway, thanks for listening and I hope uh, people uh, uh, will move to renewables very quickly because that's the way you get wealthy uh, and independent of oil uh, and of course in a much healthier society. So uh, thanks for listening.